I'm going to do a quick session on creating the MMA fashion design look. We know that this look is really popular, especially if you're working with high schools and youth groups. Being able to implement these types of designs is a big benefit. The kids really love these types of designs, especially your police departments, fire departments, etc. Because this is the stuff they're seeing in the MMA and the sh retail shelves, in the, in the malls with the fashion t-shirts and things like that. And I just want to show you how easy it is with brushes to create a design like this or a look like this. I've got a simple skull on the screen here and all I'm going to do with this skull is I'm just going to go ahead and start adding some feathers to this and kind of make this into like an Indian skull with feathers. Very easy to do. I'm going to go into my brushes. I'll come in here. I'm going to go down into my feathers. I'm going to go to my hand-drawn feathers and select OK. Come in here take a look at my feathers. Now looking at the way my feathers are set up, first thing I'm going to do is just grab a feather and start creating strokes and I can see that I've got a nice hand-drawn looking feather stroke there even though it's all vector very easy to separate and do your screen printing with even on manual presses even though there's a lot of detail because it's vector it's very clean very easy to work with take a look at some of the different feathers that I've got here I think I probably might want to start with something like this feather here now to start out all I'm going to do is I'm just going to left click here and start coming off of this skull and start shaping out what would be maybe hair or wings feather coming off here. I want to take this and just right click order and go to front of page other layer that's fine and we'll just go with this right here now looking at this I'm thinking that I might actually want to go from barbed wire and then for the hair and then into feathers and I actually think that's what I'll do so I'm going to back up here just a little bit go back into my barbed wire here double click on that Select OK. Now I've got my barbed wire brushes. Come in here and maybe you want to work with one like this here. Left click and just start pulling some barbed wire here. Now this is on another layer. I want to right click, order, and select to front of page there. Select OK. Actually I'll take my skull, right click, order, and send that to back of page. That way my brushes will be on top. Now I can see that I've got this thicker end on this one and a thinner end at the other end. So what I want to do is I can go ahead and take my pick tool and I'll double click on that select my nodes come up here and reverse my curve direction you can see how that makes it thicker here in the front and it comes out thinner in the back I'm going to go back to my tool here for the barbed wire left click and just start to bring this in almost like I'm adding hair to this skull design but in the form of barbed wire as you can see here now this is very detailed complicated style of art but it just creates a look that's totally off the wall I want to hit control Z and we'll bring this in now I could take some time to tweak some of this but for the sake of the tutorial I'll move along here as quickly as I can and we'll bring some more of this up in here and kind of balance that out up that way so now I've got all this barbed wire coming in off of this skull and I'll bring some more in down this way here something like that there. I'm not really happy with that. I want to follow the flow here and come down in this way with some of that barbed wire also. And I'll come down in here this way also at the bottom. So I've got all this barbed wire going on here. I'm going to go ahead and double click here and change this shape and bring this right down in there like that. So I got this cool barbed wire effect coming off of this skull. It looks really MMA look here. Next thing I probably want to do is bring some feathers in off behind this to set it off. So simply go down here and I'll go into my feathers right here. I'm going to go to hand drawn feathers and select OK. Come in here and grab a feather stroke. I want to make sure I got nothing selected and see which feather I've got there. Now you can see that that messed that up, but all I need to do is fix things like that. When you see it, just double click, tweak your node, and you'll see that that'll fix that. That'll address that. So don't think that the brush isn't working or the stroke isn't working. It's just that there's an issue with the nodes and you need to address it. Not, not really. That's not really the look that I'm looking for. I'm going to zoom in just a bit here, and I'll do that and la just lasso everything here and zoom in. Go back to my artistic media tool and see what we're looking for for a brush here. That's not what I'm looking for. Is this what I'm looking for here? No, that's not really what I'm looking for either. Maybe that? No. How about that? Something like that? Not really. Something like that, maybe. Am I in my hand-drawn brushes here? Hand-drawn graphic, that's why. Okay, I want to be in hand-drawn. And that's what it was. I was actually in my hand-drawn graphic brushes and not in my hand-drawn brushes. Take a look at this here coming off of hand-drawn. I like that one there. Look at it. You can see the detail in that. 
Now, coming down through here, I'm going to take a look at some of the other ones. See if there's anything that I want to work with here, shape-wise. That I really like the shape of that one and the other one. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and go back here to this one because it's kind of edged off here. And I'm just going to come in off the back of this skull and then come up in here with some feathers like that. Now, what I want to do is I want to be a little bit more dramatic in arching up here. Something like that. And then I want to change the size of this brush so it's a little bit bigger. It looks a little bit more like feathers or wings. And I can take this and just tweak it a little bit. I'll go to my pick tool, double click here, bring this here and come right off of that shape there. Do the same thing here. And I might want to double click here, lay a node down here, come up this way, just to see how this looks with that type of an effect going off of that feather there. Now I could go up off to the sides or I could go down. Looking that I want to hit Control Z and go back. And I think we're going to work pretty much just about right with what we've got right here. And that'll be fine. I'm going to go back to my brush tool, come back in here. I'm going to follow the shape of this up off this way and just start creating a wing look to go back behind the skull. But I want to have some distance between these feathers after I lay them down. And I'm working with a mouse. I would probably be much better if I was working with my tablet. But I want everybody to see that you can do this with a mouse. You don't have to work with a tablet when you're creating these type of designs. I'll double click here and bring this off this way and arch that down. Just control what's going on with the shape of these feathers. Do the same thing here. Go back to my pick tool, double click. For me, that's the easiest way is just go to my pick tool and double click. Different ways you can do these things, but for me, that's just simple enough to deal with. And we'll come in off here and I'm going to bring this back over this way just a little bit. Click off here, go back to my artistic media tool, come back in behind the skull, and then just start building out that way with that. Now I'm going to change this feather to this feather here. And start working with a different feather. I think I'll do the same thing here, which will be that feather right there. And I'll do the same thing here. I have this like the lead feather on top of the wing, and then these are different feathers going down through here. And I'll do the same thing here also. And I like the way that's working out right now. Now what I'm going to do is just go ahead and select all these. Hold down shift, right click, right click, right click. And order to back of page. Other layer, that's fine. Select OK. I want to get this, this, and this. Order and to back of page. Select OK for the other layer. Now you can see I'm going here and tweak these barbed wire strokes. So I'm starting to get a really interesting look here. I'm going to go ahead and change the shape of that just a little bit. And then I'm going to go back to my brush tool and bring in some more look of the feather here. Down, coming off, and playing off of the skull. But I'm going to take these and change the size of them. I'm going to bring this one down in size quite a bit. Right about to there. I'm going to do the same thing here. Click on this one here. The next one, bring that down in size quite a bit. And we'll do the same thing here quite a bit, bring that down in size quite a bit. Now that we've got these set up, I'm going to need to zoom in and take a look at what's going on with my nodes and the shape of the feathers. And I want to just click off here, take a look at this, I'm going to delete that node, bring this shape up into here and arch it out a little bit so it follows the flow of that one. This one I'll click on, delete all of these nodes and I'll start changing the shape here just a little bit. I'll click here, create a node, bring this over this way had this flow kind of like that. Come over here, double click on this one. Get all of these different nodes here. I'm going to drop a node here and then bring this out shape-wise that way. Go ahead and lasso both of these nodes and then bring this in up so it's quite a bit smaller. And then I'll take this and I'll go ahead and select these three feathers. You got to make sure you click on the graphic part that's attached to your wire, not the wire else. It won't grab the graphic. Order to back of page, select OK. So I've got this whole wing thing with skulls going on in this design. And what I want to do at this point in time is just go ahead and duplicate this. Come up here and mirror that. And now I've got a whole skull wing set that would be like an MMA setup. Now I can come in here with a banner across the bottom and go all kinds of different things with my brushes. And what I'll actually do is probably bring a banner up across the top 
and then come down in here with something else. So I'm going to go over here to my artistic media tool again. I'm going to open here and I'm going to go to banners. And here I'll go to hand drawn banner, select OK. Now you can imagine I've set this up so far in less than 10 minutes working with all this. And if I wasn't working in the video, I'd probably spend some more time tweaking some things. But you can see here I'm setting up a totally insane design just in a matter of minutes. I'm going to create a banner going up here across the top. So I'll just left click and start to bring that banner shape around this. That might where I put some text. Now I got a feather there on that one, but we'll change that to a banner. And I'll come down through here until I get a banner I like. And we could work with something like that probably. Go ahead and zoom in here just a bit. Now at some point in time, I'd probably do a save and I'd probably start breaking the brushes apart as we saw in the earlier tutorial just to go ahead and stop all the brush action that's going on with Corel. When Corel's got all of this different vector objects hooked up to wireframes, it starts to render a little bit slower, but if you break off all your brushes and weed out your little wires that your brushes are attached to, Corel will start to perform a little bit better. Come back down through here into say something like that. Is that what I want? Not really. Come up here. Actually, I like this one. This looks like it'll be pretty good. <clears throat> Go ahead and bring this up in size just a bit. And you can see how the brush responds to different thicks and width, thick, thickness and width. But go ahead and click off on this. I'm going to click on here, get my pick tool, double click on this, get my nodes. I'm going to delete that node there, bring this up this way. See, we've got another node there. I'm going to delete that and make these two arms, control arms, pretty much about the same and just arch this up like we can see here. And then I'll bring this in on top of my design. I can actually scale this out and bring this in across the top of the design just like that. And then coming down through my design, you know, I might put my text in here, fighter name or something like a school name or put some school objects here in the background. Go back to artistic media, come up here and bring this up in size just a little bit. And then come back here, double click again here with my pick tool set this up. I'm going to drop a node over here and then I'm going to come over here and bring this node and then lasso this and have this follow the shape of the design. Then I'll do the same thing over here right about in the middle of this second fold. Drop a node, come down here, grab this node, bring this up into the wing, pull this down and shape this right around the side of my feather there. So now it kind of flows with that. Now you can see the real benefit of working with those banners. You've got real control over the shape of those banners. And I'm going to go ahead and resize that a bit again. Bring that up just a little bit bigger. Right about there. So there's my banner across the top. Now if I want to come in with some different effects, I actually laid down something there I don't want to. Make sure I click off, got nothing selected. I'm going to go into my chiseled stone and create a chiseled stone tribal here. Come in here that way and bring some of that down in through here. Now the way I'm going to do that is I'm going to bring that chiseled stone right down in here like this and play off the design. And we'll do some of that right here. See how that one looks. And that's really different. We're going to come down in size just a little bit here. Got a really different look with that going on here with the chiseled stone. We could arch that off this way and play off the shape of the skull just like that and select order to back of page, select OK for the layer, change that. That's kind of interesting. Let's take a look at some of the different chisel stone looks we've got here. And I probably want to take a look at maybe this one. That's going in another direction. I don't really like that one. And we'll take a look at something like maybe this right here. See how that looks. That's the one we're actually working with. Take a look at this one. How does that look? Got to go down in size here. And that's a really different look. But I'm really not, you know, I might want to work with chiseled stone. I might not. Let me take a look at this. Here, I can bring this off this way. Off the skull like that. And have that effect going in that way. Or do some different things with that. Let's take a look at some other ones here. Take a look at this one here. See how that looks. That's really quite thicker, so I'll have to bring that up in size. And actually looking at that, I might want to bring that down through here. And that start, yeah, that actually looks pretty good right there. I'll double click on that and we'll use that down here at the bottom of the design. Just bring it right off a straight line and right up through the middle. Something like that. And then we'll go right here, order, 
and to back of page, select OK. So I've got this chiseled stone effect coming down here across the bottom, centered between the two skulls. And what I'll probably want to do back here in the background is come in with some splats, distress, and grunge. So I'll probably come in and just hit that with some watercolor or something there in the background. We'll come back in here and I'll come back to, let me see here, I want to go into arch, ancient text. No, I want to go to grunge. Do I want to do that or do I want to go to cracks? You know what, I think I'll go to cracks now. Actually come here to cracks, select that, and I'll just bring some cracks in here across the back of the design to fill up what's going on in there and create something along the background here of my design. Take a look at this particular crack file. That looks pretty good. And that can go there and then we can get some cracks going in down through here and then some more of the same here. So, okay, that's set up. Now I want to double click here and bring this node and these cracks back over this way to the other side just so they kind of balance with what's going on. Go ahead and collect bo select both these order to back of page. Select OK, grab these cracks here and these cracks here. Order to back of page. I want to make sure I got this one here. Order and to back of page. Select OK. And we got some cracks in here that I think we got, or no? Yep. I'm going to take this order and to back of page. Select OK. Now I could go back in here with some splats. So I'm going to get my brush tool here. I'm going to go down into my splats to offset around those skulls. So I'm going to come back here to splats and I'm going to go with light splats instead of heavy splats because I just want some splat effect in here around the skulls and stuff. Come down here and select a splat brush, probably something like this one right here. Zoom in, left click and just pull some splats in here. I'm going to need to resize that and we'll bring that brush stroke size down to about right there and actually probably a little bit smaller than that and I'll bring some splats in there to offset on my skull. So we'll come in here and we'll just follow the shape of the skull here with our splats right in through there. That's fine. We'll take that, right click, order to back of page, select OK. And there's some splats in there and we'll do the same thing over here. Start right up in here and just pull right in down along the skull. And we can move this one out just a little bit. Right click, order, and to back of page, select OK. So you can see, even though I've just kind of been working open mic here, and I'll go ahead and click on this and might want to tuck this in here just a little bit. I could go back in and do some more tweaking, but here we've got a very affliction MMA looking design that we've created in less than 20 minutes working with these brushes. Now, working with static objects or doing this work by hand would have taken hours, but here we've gone through and set this up just in a matter of minutes. And as I've said, in this industry, you've got to be able to create designs like these in minutes or else you're not going to be profitable in your art department. Everybody's, you know, everybody wants a great design, but they only, you can only charge them $10, $15, $20 for artwork. Well, working with these brushes, you can go through and set up designs like this that people are just going to scream about and they're just going to love, but you'll be able to do it in minutes because you're not working with static art. You're working with the creative flexibility that you have through brushes in Corel Drawn. Of course, I could continue with this design and do many more things with it. I just wanted to show you how easy it is to set up something like an MMA fashion design in a matter of minutes working with the Ryanette brush pack and the over 800 brushes that are available in the pack. So this will be the end of our training series and hopefully we'll see you in some future training series. Thank you for taking time to watch and hopefully you'll grab your brush pack and start doing some really flexible design work with your brushes from Ryanette and SilkScreeningSupplies.com. Thank you.